tired of playing small with your life? Feel like you were meant to be so much more? If so, this groundbreaking book was written for you. This is kind of a beginner's book who like to start reading. Passionately inspiring, provocative and full of big ideas that will get you to your ideal life faster than ever. This book is presented in such a way that each topic is written in a page or two and it contains one at one short tiny it powerful topics. Without much delay let's jump into listening. Welcome the greatness in your life. The first topic I'm no guru. The media sometimes calls me a leadership guru. I'm not. I'm just an ordinary guy who happened to have learned ideas and tools that have helped many human beings reach their best lives and many organizations get to world class. But I must be really clear. I'm not different from you. I have my struggles, my frustrations and my own fears along with my hopes, goals and dreams. I've had good seasons and some deeply painful ones. I've made some spectacularly good choices and some outrageously bad mistakes. I'm very human, a work in progress. If I have ideas that you find insightful, please know it's simply because I spend my days focused on the knowledge you are about to experience. Thinking about practical ways to help you play your biggest game as a human being and reach greatness. Dwelling on how I can help companies get to the extraordinary. Do anything long enough and you'll get some depth of insight and understanding about it. Then they will call you a guru. A man at a signing I did at a bookstore in Bangalore, India, heard me say, I'm no guru. He came up to me and said, why are you so uncomfortable being called a guru? Guru simply means darkness in Sanskrit and ru simply means dispel. So the word guru simply speaks of one who dispels the darkness and brings more understanding and light. Nice point, made me think. I guess my discomfort stems from the fact that if you think I'm different from you, then you might say, well, I can't do the kinds of things Robin talks about because he has talents and abilities and I don't have. All the stuff he talks about is easy for him to do. He is this guru. No, sorry to disappoint you. I'm just a guy working hard to make the best of his days, trying to be a great single dad to my two wonderful children and hoping he is in some way making a difference in people's lives. No guru here. But I do like the dispelling the darkness point. Need to learn more about that one. Maybe some guru can help me. Topic 2. Ovicatel and Windows of Opportunity I don't always get it right. I told you I am no guru. But please know that I try so hard to walk my talk and to ensure my video is in alignment with my audio. Still, I am a human being and that means sometimes I slip. Here's what I mean. I spend a lot of time encouraging the readers of my books and the participants at my workshops on my personal and organizational leadership to run towards your fears and to cheese those cubic centimeter of chances, opportunities, when they present themselves. I challenge my clients to dream, to shine and to dare because to me a life well lived is all about reaching for your highest and your best. And in my mind, the person who experiences the most wins. Most of the time, I'm a poster boy for visiting the places that scare me and doing the things that make me feel uncomfortable. But recently, I didn't. Sorry. I was downtown at the Four Seasons in Toronto in the lobby, getting ready for a speech I was about to give to a company called Advanced Medical Optics, which is a long-standing leadership coaching client of ours and an impressive organization. I look up and guess who I see? Ove Ketel. Yes, the Ove. Reservoir Dogs Big Movie Star Cater. And what does the man who wrote The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari do? I shrink from greatness. I don't know why I didn't stand up and walk over and make a new friend. I've done it with baseball legend Pete Rose at the Chicago airport. We ended up sitting next to each other all the way to Phoenix. I did it last summer with Henry Gravis, one of the planet's top financiers in the lobby of a hotel in Rome. I was with my kids and Colby, my 11 years old son, thought he was pretty cool. 
I did it with Senator Edward Kennedy when I saw him in Boston. I even did it with guitar with Chuso Hedy Van Halen when I was a kid growing up in Halifax, Nova Scotia. But I missed the chance to connect with Avicetel. Each day, life will send you little windows of opportunity. Your destiny will ultimately be defined by how you respond to these windows of opportunity. Shrink from them and your life will be small. Feel the fear and run to them anyway and your life will be big. Life is just too short to play little. Even with your kids, you only have a tiny window to develop them and champion their highest potential and to show them what unconditional love look like. When that window closes, it's hard to reopen it. If I see Harvey Keitel again, I promise you that I'll sprint toward him. You may think I'm a celebrity stalker until we start to chat. And then he will discover the truth. I'm simply a man who chases the gift that life presents to him. Chapter 3. Nothing fails like success. Richard Carrion, the CEO of Pirito Rico's top bank, once shared a line with me that I'll never forget. Robin, nothing fails like a success. Powerful thought. You as well as your organization are most vulnerable when you are most successful. Success actually breeds complacency, inefficiency and worst of all arrogance. When people and businesses get really successful, they often fall in love with themselves. They stop innovating, working hard, taking risks and begin to rest on their laurels. They go on the defensive, spending their energy protecting their success rather than staying true to the very things that got them to the top. Whenever I share this point with a room full of CEOs, every single one of them nods in agreement. Please, let me give you a real world example from my own life. This past weekend, I took my kids to our favorite Italian restaurant. The food is incredible there. The best brasola outside of Italy. Heavenly pasta, super foamy lattes that make me want to give up my job and become a barista. But the service at this place is bad. Bad, bad, bad. Why? Because the place is always full and because they are doing so well, they've taken the lines out front for granted. And guess what? It's the beginning of their end. I love taking pictures. My dad taught me to record the journey of my life with photos. So I generally carry a little camera with me. I asked our server if she would snap a picture of my children and me as we dug into our spaghetti. I don't have time, was the curt reply. Unbelievable. Too busy to take 5 seconds to keep a customer happy? Too busy to help out a little? Too busy to show some humanity? Nothing fails like a success. Richard Carrion gets it. So does David Neelman, the CEO of JetBlue, who observed, when you are making money and good margins, you tend to get sloppy. Many CEOs don't. The more successful you and your organization become, the more humble and devoted to your customers you need to be. The more committed to efficiency and relentless improvement you need to be. The faster you need to play, the more value you need to add. Because the moment you stop doing the very things that got you to the top of the mountain is the very moment you begin the slid down to the valley. 4. Be a rock star at work. Just finished reading an article in Fortune on the Google guys and all their economic success. It inspired a torrent of ideas. It got me thinking about the importance of showing up fully at work, giving the fullness of your brilliance and playing full out. Being widely passionate about your to-dos, being breathtakingly committed to your big projects and best opportunities, being a rock star in whatever you do each day to put bread on your table. Work gives meanings to our lives. It influences our self-worth and the way we perceive our place under the sun. Being great at what you do isn't just something you do for the organization you work for. It's a gift you give yourself. Being spectacularly great at your work promotes personal respect, excitement and just makes your life a lot more interesting. Good things happen to people who do good things and when you bring your highest talents and deepest devotion to the work you do, what you are really doing is settling yourself up for a richer, happier and more fulfilling experience of living. 
how do you feel after an ultra productivity how do you feel when you have given your best had fun with your teammates and gone the extra mile for customers how do you feel when you have brought more heart to what you do for a living how do you feel when you reached from your greatest goals and grabbed them it feels pretty good doesn't it and you don't need to have the biggest title to do the best job this point makes me think of the words of dr martin luther king jr one of my heroes who once observed if a man is called to be a street sweeper he should sweep streets even as michael angelo painted or as beethoven composed music or shakespeare wrote poetry he should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pass to say here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well so be a rock star at work today walk onto the stage of this day and play your heart out give the performance of your life wow your audience and get them cheering for you be the bono of selling staplers be the keith records of accounting be the jimmy hendrix of human resources and when you get famous and people from all over ask you for your autograph make sure you drop me a line i would love to hear from you number 5 your days define your life big idea your days are your life in miniature as you live your hours so you create your years as you live your days so you craft your life what you do today is actually creating your future the words you speak the thoughts you think the food you eat and the actions you take are defining your destiny shaping who you are becoming and what your life will stand for small choices lead to giant consequences over time there is no such thing as an unimportant day each one of us is called to greatness each one of us has an exquisite power within us each one of us can have a significant impact on the world around us if we so choose but for this power that resides internally to grow we need to use it and the more you exercise it the stronger it gets the more this power gets tapped the more confident you become henry david thoreau related to this point well when he wrote i know of no more encouraging fact than the unquestionable ability of a human being to elevate their life by conscious endeavor and advertising guru donny dush added a more current spin on the idea when he wrote in his book often wrong never in doubt for every person with the stuff the one out of a hundred who goes to a rare field place is the one who says why not me and goes for it the best among us are not more gifted than the rest they just take little steps each day as they march toward their biggest life and the days slip into weeks the weeks into months and before they know it they arrive at a place called extraordinary number 6 drink coffee with gandhi reading is one of the best disciplines i know how to stay on your game and at your highest reading from a great book is really all about having a conversation with author and we become our conversations just think tonight by reading mahatma gandhi's autobiography my experiments with truth over a cup of coffee you can get behind this great man's high balls and learn what made him tick want to hang out with madonna tomorrow grab her book same for jack welk mother teresa bill gates and reading a book by someone you respect allow some of their brilliance to rub off on you the hands that put down a great book will never be the same as oliver wendell holmes observed a mind once stretched by a new idea can never return to its original dimensions when i was growing up my father once told me cut back on your rent or cut back on what you spend on food but never worry about investing money in a good book the powerful thought has accompanied me through life his philosophy was that all it takes is one idea discovered in a single book to lift you to a whole new level and revolutionize the way you see the world and so our home was filled with books and now i try to devote at least an hour a day to reading that habit alone has transformed me thank you dad perhaps my greatest gift to my children when i die will be my library i have books on leadership relationships business philosophy wellness spirituality great lives and many of my other favorite topics in it 
Many of these I have picked up in bookshops from across the planet when I travel on business. These books have shaped my thinking. They have formed my personal philosophy. They have made me the man I am. To me, my books are priceless. The old expression is true. Knowing how to read and not reading is almost the same as not knowing how to read. Make the time to read something good each day. Fill your mind with big ideas and dazzling thoughts. Use books to flood your soul with hope and inspiration. And remember, if you want to lead, you really need to read. Oh, and if you like me, have the habit of buying more books than you can ever possibly read. Don't feel guilty. You are building your library and that's a beautiful thing. Topic number 7. Get some skin in the game. I fail more than most people. I fail all the time. I've had failures in business, I've had failures in relationships, I've had failures in life. I used to wonder why this happened. I used to play poor me and suffer from the dreaded disease of victimitis infinitis. But now I get it. I've been stumbling toward my best life. Failure is the price of the greatness. Failure is an essential ingredient for a high achievement. As innovation guru David Kelly wrote, fail faster, succeed sooner. You can't win without leaving your safety zone and taking some calculated risk. No risk, no reward. And the more risk you take in the pursuit of your dreams, the more you are going to fail. Too many amongst us live in what I call the safe harbor of the known. Same breakfast for 20 years, same drive to work for 20 years, same conversations for 20 years, same thinking for 20 years. I have no judgment on that kind of a life. If it makes you happy, well, that's great. But I don't know of anyone who is happy living like that. If you keep doing what you have been doing, you will keep getting what you have been getting. Einstein defined insanity as doing the same things but expecting different results. Yet, most people rule their lives that way. True joy comes when you put some skin in the game and take some chances. Yes, you will start to experience more failure. But guess what? Success also starts to pay more visits. Failures is just part of the process of getting to world class. Screw ups are the mark of the excellence, said management consultant Tom Peters. The best companies on the planet have failed more than the average ones. The most successful people on the planet have failed more than ordinary ones. To me, the only failure is a failure to try and dream and dare. The real risk lies in riskless living. Mark Twain made the point perfectly when he observed 20 years from now you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did so go ahead stretch today ask for the best table in your favorite restaurant ask for an upgrade to first class on your next flight ask your teammate at work for more understanding ask your sweetheart at home for more love do it i dare you and remember you can't win a game that you don't even play number 8 be into breezes i was at my tennis club a while ago with my kids who are great players i'm a great ball boy at best a man who i guess would be in his early 70s come up to me and start a conversation interesting person lived a rich life so far after a few moments he closes his eyes and smiles i ask what's going on his reply was unforgettable oh nothing much it's just that i'm really into breezes perfect in this age of wanting more needing more and having more it was so refreshing to hear someone speak of the simple pleasures of life i need to be clear i have nothing against material things contrary to popular belief the monk who sold his ferrari isn't a manifesto against making money and enjoying the good life my main message there was simply remember what's more important to leading a great life Drive a BMW, wear Prada, stay at the Four Seasons, and earn a ton of money if these are the things that make you happy. Life is certainly full of material pleasures that really do make the journey more delightful. No need to feel guilty about enjoying them. But please don't forget about these basic but beautiful treasures to be loved along the way, like deep human connections, realizing your best through fulfilling work, exploring the world, and experience the glory of nature. like a sensational sunset that fills your soul or a full moon set against a star filled sky some of life's best pleasures are its simplest one enrich your life with more of them and your heart will be happy 
and you can start with sweet breezes. Number 9. Make time to think. I am blessed to be able to meet interesting people from all walks of life regularly because of the work I do. I meet filmmakers, poets, brilliant college students, wise teachers and visionary entrepreneurs. Each one of these encounters has taught me something and shaped my perspective. I had dinner recently with one of Asia's top CEO. I asked him the secret of his outrageous success. He smiled. I make the time to think. Every morning he spends at least 45 minutes with his eyes closed, deep in reflection. He is not meditating, he is not praying, he is thinking. Sometimes he is analyzing business challenges, other times he is thinking about new markets, still other times he is being introspective on the meaning of his life and what he wants it to stand for. Often he is simply dreaming up new ways to grow personally and professionally. Every once in a while he will spend between 6 and 8 hours doing this, sitting silently, still with his eyes closed, thinking. Making the time to think is super strategy for success or leadership and in life. Too many people spend the best hours of their days solely engaging in doing on the execution aspect of the things. Recently, a client said to me, Robin, sometimes I get so busy that I don't even know what I am so busy doing. But what if he is busy with the wrong things? Few things are as disappointing as investing all your time, energy and potential climbing a mountain only to find once at the top that you climb the wrong one. Thinking and reflection ensures that you are on the right mountain. Peter Drucker, the management expert, said it so well. There is nothing so useless as doing efficiently that which should not be done at all. Being thoughtful and strategic is step number one as you walk to greatness. Clarity precedes success. By thinking more, you will have a better sense of your priorities and what you need to focus on. Your actions will be more crisp and deliberate and intentional. You will make better decisions and wiser choices. More time thinking will make you less reactive. You will become clearer on the best uses of your time, which will in turn save your time. And your think time will provoke some amazing ideas and inspire some big dreams. Lewis Carroll addressed this point beautifully in Alice in Wonderland when he wrote, There is no use in trying, said Alice. One can't believe impossible things. I dare say, you haven't had much practice, said the queen. When I was your age, I always did it for half an hour a day. Why sometimes I have believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast? Chapter 10 Leadership Begins on the Extra Mile I had just dropped off Colby and Bianca at school and was driving to the office when I got an insight that made me pull over. So here I sit, off to the side of the road, with my hazard blinkers on, hammering this out on my blackberry because I wanted to share it with you. The big idea, leadership and success begins on the extra mile. Leadership is shown when a salesperson makes extra calls at the end of an exhausting day, not because it's the easy thing to do but because it's the right thing to do. Leadership is shown by the manager who finishes a report that has taken the very best from him, then goes back to it a little later to polish and improve it even more. Leadership is shown by a team that delivers on their value promise to a customer and then fix even deeper to warp them. And leadership is shown by the human being who fights the urge to stay under the covers on a cool day and throws on her running shoes to proud the pavement. Not because running miles on a frosty morning is fun, but because it's wise. Please think about this idea. I think it's a deeply important one. Those among us who craft extraordinary careers and spectacular lives are those who spend most of the time giving their best out on the extra mile. Yes, ordinary people don't spend much time on the extra mile, but Whoever said you were ordinary? Chapter 11 Mick Jagger and Reference Points Last Monday night, I watched a 62-year-old man rock the house for more than two hours in front of 30,000 adoring fans. Yep, Mick is 62 and the once young stones frontman is aging. But he still has the charisma, still has the moves, still has the youth. As I watched him, I thought of a term I have been sharing at my seminars these days. Reference points. 
I heard someone say last week, I'm in my 60s, getting near the end of my life. Not if Mick is your reference point. Positive reference points will pull you into a new way of seeing things and introduce you to a new set of possibilities. Those you never even knew existed will begin to open. Lance Armstrong is a great reference point on persistence. My father is a great reference point on integrity. My mother is an excellent reference point on kindness. My children are superb reference points on what unconditional love and boundless curiosity look like. Richard Branson is a spectacular reference point on living a full out of life. Madonna is a great reference point on reinvention. Peter Drucker was a wonderful reference point on the importance of lifelong learning. Nelson Mandela is a brilliant reference point on courage and humanitarianism. Often we have weak reference points so we see the limitations of a scenario rather than the opportunities. With world class reference points you will realize far more of your potential and life will have more wonder. You will play a bigger game as a human being if you pick the right people to model. We are all cut from the same cloth. We are all flesh and bones. If they can get to greatness so can you. You just need to do the same kind of things your reference points did to reach the excellence. And I'll tell you one thing. When I'm 62, I want to be like Mick because he's just getting started. Topic number 12. Business is relationships. I'm sitting on plane in Frankfurt as I write this chapter. I spent yesterday meeting with publishers who have distributed the monk who sold his Ferrari series around the world. Each autumn, Frankfurt comes alive as 2,50,000 publishing people descend on the city for the world's largest book fair. For me, today marks the last day of a 20-day speaking and book tour that took me throughout India to Istanbul and finally to this small German city. Learned so much this past three weeks, met so many amazing human beings who blessed me with their kindness, been moved by the sea change of a people who who are reaching for their greatest lives and leading by example perhaps most of all i have been reminded that few things are more important than building relationships how easy it is to forget that ultimately business and life is all about forging human bonds being out on this tour i laughed with my readers at book signings i broke bread with the clients we do leadership development work for I drank coffee with my publishers. I got to know the people in this community that has grown around my message and they got to know me. Big idea. People want to know that you are real, that you are decent, kind and trustworthy. They want to feel you and sense you and look into your eyes to see what you are made of. They want to know your passion for whatever it is you stand for. and when they sense that you are the real deal they will open up to you when they see that you have their best interest in mind they will trust you and keep your best interest in mind once they get that you are good they will be good to you and your career along with your life will get to a place called world class based on those trust connections it's easy to forget that people do business with people they like and who make them feel good simple stuff i know it most of us just don't get around to becoming masterful at the basics success is all about consistency around the fundamentals the only thing that's rocket science is rocket science so i invite you to get out of your office and go circulate being out there makes good things happen nothing really happens until you move shake hands do lunches show genuine interest spread your goodwill evangelize your message remember that before someone will lend you a hand You need to touch their heart and that business is all about relationships. Chapter 13 Life Lessons from SpongeBob SquarePants SpongeBob SquarePants is my hero. The kids and I were having breakfast this morning when Bianca, my 9-year-old daughter, brought up the subject of this crazy little cartoon character. Daddy, is SpongeBob a real person? Made me laugh. Then it made me think. If SpongeBob were a human being, this world would be a better place. Seriously. Here are four lessons SpongeBob can teach us to get more joy from life. Be the eternal optimist. The guy or sponge, I should say, always sees the best in any situation. 
your thinking really does shape your reality and because spongebob looks for the best he finds it value people spongebob knows what friendship means he loves his pals in bigney bottom even squidward who is always cranky to borrow my son's words spongebob knows that respect and putting people first are two of the most important elements for strong relationships be an original spongebob is one of a kind too many amongst us are afraid to be ourselves so we give up our dreams to follow the crowd tragic to tine her own self be true wrote shakespeare have the courage to be your true and greatest you warren buffett once said there can be two yous love and have fun there is no point in being successful but sad makes no sense yes reach for the mountain top but enjoy the climb as well life wasn't meant to be an ordeal it was meant to be a celebration so how big time fun as you chase and catch your most cherished dreams chapter 14 how to be a happier human here's a simple idea that has worked brilliantly for the executives and entrepreneurs who i coach if you want to be happier do more of the things that make you happy i know that seems like an obvious point but it's not as we meet the wonder years of childhood most of us stop doing the things that make our hearts sing One CEO client told me recently that when he was young he used to love to take long solo rides on his bicycle. I stopped doing that when we had kids and work demands took over. Life just got busier, but those moments out on that bike came from some of the best days of my life. And the client, a phenomenally successful entrepreneur, shared that his passion used to be playing with drums in a rock band. Those were incredible times. Then I started my business and it began to consume me. I miss playing music. I would lose myself in it. Here's your to do. Make a list of your 10 greatest passions, 10 activities that fill your heart with the joy and remind you of how good life can be. And then over the coming 10 weeks, inject one of those pursuits into your weekly schedules. Powerful thought. The things that get scheduled or the things that get done Until you schedule something, it's only a concept, and extraordinary people don't build remarkable lives on concepts. They build their greatness on action and near flawless execution around their deliverables. They get things done. This 10-week program works. When you get back to doing those things that lifted your spirit and sent you soaring, you reconnect with that state of happiness that you may have lost. And part of the purpose of life is to be happy, really happy. Chapter 15 Work hard get lucky That old line remains so true the harder i work the luckier i get life helps those who help themselves learn that one from personal experience i'm not one of those new age types that believes it's all meant to be and that our lives have been scripted by an invisible set of ants that kind of talk smacks of victim speak and fear fear of failure fear of rejection fear of not being good enough fear of success that kind of language also lacks any sense of personal responsibility and usually comes from people too afraid to get into the game sure i believe that there is a force of nature that comes into play when we least expect it and the most need it and yes i believe there is a coherence to the way our lives unfold that is highly intelligent but i also believe deeply that we were given free will and the power to make choices for a single reasons to exercise them i believe that we generally get from life what we give to life i believe that good things happen to those willing to put in the effort exercise discipline and make the sacrifice that personal and professional greatness requires no demands i've also found that actions have consequences and the more good things i do through good old odd work the most success i see life favors the devoted not one of the uber successful people i worked with as a leadership coach got there without outworking everyone around them while others were boom watching tv or sleeping these great ones who have made their mark on the world and have added tremendous value to it were up early putting in the hours showing life that they were dedicated to their dream I'm not for even a moment denying the importance of work life balance. 
and spending time with loved ones or caring for your inner life i'll be the first to stand for those values all i'm saying is that behind extraordinary achievement you'll always discover extraordinary effort just a law of nature as it changed for thousand years ivan said in birth the chairman and ceo of verizon tells the following story my first boss he was the building superintendent and i was a janitor watched me sweep floors and wash walls for almost a year before he mentioned i could get tuition for college if i got a job with the phone company when i asked him why he waited so long he said i wanted to see if you were worth it and time warner ceo dick parsons once observed that the best advice he ever got was from his grandmother she told him whatever a man soweth that shall he also reap so plant your seeds be spectacularly great at what you do wear your passion on your sleeve and hold your heart in the palm of your hand and work hard really hard hard work opens doors and shows the world that you are serious about being one of those rare and special human beings that uses the fullness of their talents for the highest and the very best chapter number 16 know your genius genius is not the sole domain of a rare breed of a person both you and i are entitled to that label and to play in that space if we so choose here is a big idea focus on any area of skill with a relentless devotion to daily improvement and a passion for excellence and within 3 to 5 years you will be operating at a level of competence and insight such that people call you a genius focus plus daily improvement plus time equals genius understand that formula deeply and your life will never be the same michael jordan was a basketball genius was his spectacular success on the court purely the result of natural gifts absolutely not he didn't try to be good at five different sports he didn't scatter his focus he just got devoted to being brilliant at basketball and he was Thomas Edison registered his stunning 1093 patents over his lifetime and invented the light bulb as well as the phonograph. A school teacher labeled him a slow learner when he was a kid. He didn't listen to kudos. He didn't try to be a great merchant and a great poet and a great musician. He focused on his inventions, he improved daily and he let time work its magic. Genius came knocking. Makes me think of a story about Pablo Picasso. One day a woman spotted him in the market and pulled out a piece of paper. Mr. Picasso, she said excitedly, I am a big fan. Please could you do a little drawing for me? Picasso happily complied and quickly etched out a piece of heart for her on the paper provided. He smiled as he handed it back to her and said, that will be a million dollars. But Mr. Picasso, the flustered woman replied, It only took you 30 seconds to do this little masterpiece. My good woman Picasso laughed. It took me 30 years to do that masterpiece in 30 seconds. Know what you can excel at, your genius. Discover your talents and then work like crazy to polish them. One of the most important of all personal leadership skills is self-awareness. Know what you are really great at. Reflect on those abilities that others admire in you. Think about those capabilities that just come easily to you and then flow effortlessly from you. You might be a fantastic communicator or have a way with people. You might possess an extraordinary ability to execute and get things done. Perhaps your special talent lies in innovation and creativity and seeing what everyone else sees but thinking a different thought. Find your genius points and then develop them. Focus plus daily improvement plus time. Start today and in 3 to 5 years people will be writing about you, calling you a genius, celebrating your magnificence and don't worry, I'll be one of them. Topic number 17. Listen twice as much as you speak. My mom is a very wise woman. As a kid I loved to talk, still I do. In school I always did well academically but my report cards never failed to note my passion for vigorously exercising my vocal cords on a near constant basis one day mom sat me down and said robin you were given two ears and one mouth for a reason to listen twice as much as you speak brilliant point 
Listening intently to someone is one of the best ways I know of to honor that person and forge a deep human connection. When you listen to someone not just with your mind but with every fiber of your being, it sends them a message. I value what you have to say and I am humble enough to listen to your words. So, few of us are really good at listening. I'll sit down next to someone on an airplane at the start of a 6-hour flight and they will still be talking by the time we land without having even asked me my name or where I'm from or what I do or the books I've read. Tells me not only that they lack what scientists call sensory acuity but that they were probably not given much listening as kids. Most people's idea of listening is waiting until the other person has finished speaking before answering. And the sad fact is that while one person is talking, most of us are rehearsing our replies. New York Attorney General Elliot Spitzer has a line that I love. Never talk when you can not. Your effectiveness as a business person, as a family member and as a human being will absolutely soar if you get this one right. Listen twice as much as you speak. Become a world-class listener. Get wildly interested in what others have to say to you and just watch how people respond. They will fall in love with you quickly. Chapter number 18. Your customers buy with their odds. I'm standing in line at a Starbucks. The Dave Matthews band is playing in the background. The smell of coffee fills the hair. The espresso machine blasts away. People are reading, relaxing and talking. The vibe is good. I feel happy here. Feels like home. If you are in a business, one of the most important things I suggest that you consider is the idea that people don't buy with their heads so much as with their hearts. The competition in today's marketplace is not too much money, not at all. The only real competition is for their emotions. Touch the hearts of the people you serve and they will be back for more. Engage their emotions and they will become your raving fans. Miss this insight and you just might lost your business. Sure, I could spend less on a cup of java. Sure, there is a coffee shop closer to where I work. But I love the way going into a Starbucks make me feel. relaxed happy good and each of us craves good feelings as we live out our days in so many ways adults are nothing more than children in grown up bodies and children are all about feeling good on this point about emotions driving customer behavior kevin roberts ceo of sachi and sachi writes in his super book love marks the future behind brands in my 34 years in business i have always trusted my emotions I have always believed that by touching emotion you get the best people to work with you the best clients to inspire you the best partners and more devoted customers Roberts then quotes neurologist Donald Kalney the essential difference between emotion and reason is that emotion leads to action while reason leads to conclusions a breathtakingly important point human beings move when their emotions are moved how does carrying an iPod around make you feel How does shopping at a hip ship makes you feel? How does walking into your favorite restaurant and being greeted like Didi or Madonna or Bill Clinton make you feel? You get my point. People go where they are made to feel cared for, special and good. People buy from a place of emotional engagement. Seems so obvious. It. Most businesses don't get it. Here's my bold statement for today. Business is in so many ways about love. Think about it. Success comes by treating your customers with love. Acclaim comes by doing your job with love. Market leadership comes with selling your wares with love. If your customers not like you, you are vulnerable to losing them when a competitor with a cheaper product or a more economical service comes along. Why? Because you have failed to emotionally connect with them. But when your customers love you, because you have touched their hearts by the way that you occur in their lives you become part of their extended family you are now a part of the community they become loyal they tell the rest of the family about you and they will take good care of you when times get tough so i'll keep going to starbucks i love the place and if you ever want to find me i'll be the guy tucked away in a quiet corner sipping on a granite soy latte with a smile on my face and joy in my heart feeling the love
चैप्टर नंबर नाइनटीन लर्न टू से नो एवरी टाइम यू से यस टू समथिंग दैट इज अन इम्पॉर्टेंट यू से नो टू समथिंग दैट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट यस मैन एंड यस वुमेन नेवर क्रिएट एनीथिंग ग्रेट दैर इज अज वैल्यू इन गेटिंग गुड एट से नो से नो टू द फ्रेंड हु वॉन्ट्स टू मीट ओवर कॉफी टू गॉसअप से नो टू द को वर्कर हु वॉन्ट टू स्प्रेड दिस नेगेटिविटी एंड सिनिसिजम Say no to the relative who laughs at your dreams and makes you doubt yourself. Say no to the social obligations that drain time from your life's work. You can't be all things to all people. The best amongst us get that. Know your priorities, know your goals, know what needs to get done over the coming weeks, months and years for you to feel that you played your best game as a human being. And then say no to everything else. Sure Some people around you might not be happy but would you rather live your life according to the approval of others or aligned with your truth and your dreams Chapter number 20 Burn your boats Great achievement often happens when our backs are up against the wall Pressure can actually enhance your performance Your power mostly fully exerts itself when the heat is on Who you truly are surfaces only when you place yourself in a position of comfort and you begin to feel like you're out on the skinny branch. Challenges serve beautifully to introduce you to your best and most brilliant self. Please stop and think about that idea for a second or two. Easy times don't make you better. They make you slower and more complacent and sleepy. Staying in the safe zone and coasting through life never made any good. Sure, it's very human to take the path of least resistance and I'd agree it's pretty normal to want to avoid putting stress on yourself by intensely challenging yourself to shine. But greatness never came to anyone normal. I have never forgotten the story of the famed explorer Hernando Cortes. He landed on the shores of Veracruz, Mexico in 1590, wanted his army to conquer the land for Spain. faced an uphill battle and aggressive enemy brutal disease as resources as they marched inland to do battle cortes ordered one of his lieutenant back to the beach with a single instruction burn our boats my kind of a guy how fully would you show up each day at work and in life if retreat just wasn't an option how high would you reach how greatly would you how hard would you work and how loud would you live if you knew your boats were burning that failure just wasn't a possibility diamonds get formed through intense pressure and remarkable human beings get formed by living from a frame of reference that tells them they just have to win